mechanical keyboards changed my life. This might sound dramatic, but to really understand it, we have to start from the beginning. Let's rewind to March of 2020. COVID-19 just knocked the entire world on its ass and we all pretty much had no idea what to do. We were left to, for the most part, our own devices. I could only play so many video games before I started to lose my mind. So I began making TikToks to keep the creative muscles in shape. I came across on YouTube the mechanical keyboard build that Taya Types did for Kifu and it sparked something in my little peanut brain. Custom mechanical keyboards were always something that I was interested in. I used to browse and peruse our mechanical keyboards on Reddit every so often through college, but it was always that hobby that just took a lot of time to understand, or at least I thought it did, and was just super expensive. That part was true. But luckily for me, when COVID-19 hit, I had more time on my hands than I knew what to do with, and had been working full time for several years at that point, and had some money to splurge. After ordering all the parts for my first custom mechanical keyboard build, I got a KVD 75 V2 from KVD fans, some Gatoron inks, and GMK Red Samurai, the classic starter GMK set. In watching countless hours of Taya Types and Alex Odo streams, I felt comfortable to take the plunge into building said mechanical keyboard. It all went according to plan, and I decided to make a TikTok going over the entire build process as I went along. This is where things all really began to shift for me. The TikTok blew up, getting over 100,000 likes in less than 48 hours. It was the first piece of content that I made personally that ever had this many eyes on it. And by a large margin at that, I was used to getting a couple hundred views on YouTube, let alone hundreds of thousands of views on TikTok. Of course, with that little bit of TikTok fame that is always fleeting, I took it upon myself to cannonball into the black hole that is the mechanical keyboard hobby. I started making daily content on keyboards, which led to me being interested in streaming, which led to me to streaming, which led to me building a community, which led to me meeting and talking with other keyboard content creators, which in turn led me to becoming friends with this community and other keyboard content creators. It was something that happened so fast, but it gave me an outlet to really express myself and show the world what I was made of when the whole world seemed pretty dark at the time. I would talk with these people almost every single day, at least for a little bit, and they were people I could trust in, I could bounce ideas off of and get feedback from. They're spread out all over the country, all over the world for that matter. I was streaming so often that it began to feel like my very own television program and I was the host. And I guess that kind of is what streaming is to an extent. It even got to a point where with the help of a lot of these really amazing friends, I got the opportunity to design my very own keycap set. It was honestly so exciting. What I thought was going to be a one-time project absolutely spiraled into me becoming a small personality in such an amazing hobby. The problem was though, after two years, this hobby began to feel less and less like a hobby and more like a job. I got severe burnout. After building over a hundred keyboards on stream and really pursuing this hobby for almost two years, I sort of fell out of love with it. It began to dawn on me that I think it was time to step away from the hobby as a creative and turn it back into what it was originally supposed to be, a hobby. But don't get me wrong, I don't think these last two years of being a creative in this space were a waste by any means. It taught me patience. You have to be precise with building keyboards and know how to take your time with things. It can be pretty easy to hurt yourself when using a 700 degree soldering iron, so you really want to be sure to be careful. And you also don't want to run the risk of damaging some very expensive parts in the build process. I learned the importance of being consistent and listening to your community for feedback. I made myself a schedule for streaming and I stuck to it. And as a reward, I had people showing up that were excited to watch me build keyboards. It was a feeling that I've never experienced before having people that I don't know really appreciate the work that I'm doing. 
It taught me a new appreciation for design and build quality. Being a person who grew up with Lego, Warhammer, building things in a creative way almost feels like it was hardwired in my brain. And when I started building mechanical keyboards, it scratched the part of my brain that after so many years away from it all, I almost forgot was there. The act of building and assembling these mechanical keyboards was just so satisfying and rewarding, and getting to use them afterwards was just as much of a reward. The incredible sound and feel that these keyboards give off in comparison to the typical membrane keyboard is like night and day. Using these also gave me a drive to learn how to properly type and use a keyboard. I've never been so efficient when typing and finding shortcuts and just working in general, especially for someone who works every day on a computer, whether it's editing, working, playing video games. Knowing how to use the keyboard properly is such a nice skill in itself to have in my arsenal. To try and wrap things up, custom mechanical keyboards are expensive and borderline unnecessary. But to try to sum them all up as just expensive pieces of metal would be an insult to what this hobby has done for me. I've made some amazing friends and relationships throughout all this and picked up some new skills and learned patience that I didn't even know was possible for me. It gave me a new sense of confidence in front of the camera and helped me enhance my skills in videography, photography, and honestly showmanship as a whole. And these are just a few of the things that I took away from building custom mechanical keyboards. It's mind boggling to me how a hobby based around building a peripheral for your computer could have such an impact on my life, but it did. This is certainly not a hobby that I can see everybody enjoying. I think it takes a really specific type of person to appreciate it, but it's one that I am forever grateful for and I feel like I owe a great debt to. I may not always be a keyboard content creator, but I will always appreciate the beautiful clack and thock of a custom mechanical keyboard. Cheers, my friends.